Hello, my friend. Okay, talking again today about this idea of planning, of picturing like what you're gonna focus on for the year, what the priorities are gonna be, mapping out what's next, blah, blah, blah. All that wonderful, exciting part about planning. And the one roadblock or, or question, we'll call it a question, the one question that I've had from a lot of people is, planning is great, but what if it's not just me? What if I'm, you know, because I talk a lot about making goals that you're in control of, right? So instead of the goal being this outcome you think might happen or you're striving towards, the goal being something you are in control of. And I did a whole video on that where I really, you know, sold you on this idea. So go watch that video if you're interested in more about that. But the pushback I often get from people is like, well, but it's not just up to me. I have a business partner. I have a team. I have a spouse. I have kids. I have parental, um, like family obligations, I have whatever, collaborators. It's not just in my control. And one, again, the goal itself, you do want to be something in your control. And every, and they're the goal, the kind of, almost think of it like a puzzle piece. The goals all fit together. So everyone has their piece, but yes, fine, there's a quilt or a puzzle that, that each piece fits together. So, so one is just notice the story of like, oh, it's only a group project. Yeah, fine. But everyone has their own piece to do in that group project. So that's something to think about or just experiment with. But the other part that I think is more useful for you if you're not a total solo, you know, cowboy, if you have a spouse, a business partner, collaborators, collaborators, team, whatever, if you've got other people involved in the planning itself, what I want you to really do is what we call like, um, go up the river. Cause so often we get really focused on the how, which is great. I, I, again, I'm the one who regularly berates people to have clear, actionable, how based goals. But what do those goals stem from? They stem from that bigger picture, the, the strategic initiatives, the dreams, the wishes, whatever. And so we want to go up the river and make sure and like find, like go as far back as you need to, to find the point of agreement, right? So let me, let me give you an example of this and then I'll explain a little bit more. So you, um, your big goal for the family this year is to buy new living room furniture. Your partner, is like, no, 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 I don't want to spend 10 grand on furniture. I want to spend 10 grand on a, on a vacation, right? And you go back and forth like, oh, but, but like we're in the house every day. That's surely the priority. And this person like, no, but like imagine the memories we'll create, blah, blah, blah. So the goal, like a lot of people talk about, okay, compromise then buy one crappy chair and go on a shorter vacation. And there you've solved that maybe. But compromise is actually the last resort because that means that no one's actually happy, which again, sometimes it's where you have to end up. That's fine. But compromise is our last resort. So what we want to do is go way back to what is the goal you actually have for that? Like, what is the vision you have? Like, why do you want to get new living room furniture? Why do you want to go on vacation? And you want to work with this person, this team, this collaborator to like find the point of agreement. Think of it like conflict management. And I know it sounds weird to be like visioning, planning, exciting conflict management. But that's what we do in conflict management, right? Compromise is always the last resort. The first resort is, is there a third way? So why? We'll go all the way back. Why do you want to get new living room furniture? Why do you want to go on vacation? to create memories, to, cre oh, to create memories. Or, or maybe it's, I like to be comfortable. I like to have good, exciting, something to look forward to. Keep going back until you can find an agreement point and then see there might actually be a creative third way. And then, yeah, of course, fine. If there's not, you can compromise and do a one week vacation and one new couch or whatever, fine. But you want to look at like, why do you want that? What is the, what is the actual reason you want the couch? And, and a better example for, you know, for us in our work is one person is like, I really think we need to invest in new tech this year. I want to get new laptops, new equipment for the team. I want to get maybe even a new office, like new resources, tech stuff, hardware stuff. The, uh, and then maybe you're like, no, no, no. It's 
personal development, professional development is our investment this year. I want coaches. I want mentors. I want training programs. Those are both valid. Both valid. Both would contribute to growth. Both would contribute to all the things, right? So you just want to take like step back from that. Why do you think it's personal development? Okay, well, because I want to show our team we're investing in them. Why does that matter? Like, do the, do the five whys deep. Just keep going until you can figure out, like, what, what, what do you think that will give you? And same with the other person. And just keep going until you can find a point where, oh, okay, we're both agreeing that we want to grow this year. We want to focus on growth. Like, we really think we can serve more clients. I think if we improve the staff, you think if we improve our resources, okay, Let's just brainstorm if we really, if, if growing, if serving more clients is our goal, let's come up with five, 10 other ways we can do that and just be playful with it because you've both agreed now. You've agreed the thing you both care about is growth. The thing you both care about is serving more people, um, doing your work on a larger scale. Great. And again, I'm not saying you'll necessarily agree. You might still end up in compromise anyways. It is what it is, but at least get clear on why. And then you can go from there. So that is my very, I mean, yeah, we're talking, <laughs> boiling down like potentially weeks of planning initiatives into a seven minute video. But that is what I, that is my wish for you, my homework for you. If you're not on your own with the planning, if there is a team or collaborator or partner, Sit down, even half an hour over like lunch or something and just explore this a little bit. Why do they want to do that? Why do you want to do this? What is the meaning beneath it? What is the thing beneath the thing? And find the point of agreement and, and kind of work your way back from there. That is my homework for you, my action for you, my friend, to play with this idea of planning. Um, and the next video, we're kind of, we keep kind of tacking back and back into planning. The next video, um, around planning and goals is, is going to be answering that age old question of what if I don't know what I want to do? What if I'm so sick of doing planning for the last two years to have, you know, everything be a dumpster fire and I don't even see the plan point of planning anymore. Life is chaos. Why plan? Agree to be honest, but we will. <laughs> The next video, I'll go more into how to get clearer, a little bit more clarity on what you do want, what your goals and, and that vision are, how to, some tools around that, um, and answering, yeah, the idea of if everything is chaos, why does it matter? We'll talk about that too, because it's valid. That's a very valid concern. All right, my friends, hope that gave you a good idea for those of you who aren't on your own in the planning stage and do have some other people you need to coordinate with, gave you an idea to try, and let me know how it's going. I'd love to cheer you on. Bye for now.